one of the things that has helped us the most is actually going somewhere more than one time because we figure stuff out. Like we're always like looking for where's there an easy grocery store and having things close to each other. ADHD Rewired episode 386. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mention on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today's guest is an ADHD rewired coach and the host of the ADHD friendly lifestyle. We are talking today with Moira Mabin. Moira's podcast, The ADHD Friendly Lifestyle, if you have not yet listened to it, is a podcast with compassion, hope, and humor as Moira shares her experiences of being a late diagnosed ADHD woman with all the stuff related to hormones and working and parenting and she brings in a lot of research and best practices and uh has kind of figured out how to create a more adhd friendly lifestyle moira welcome to the podcast thank you eric nice to be here so i uh i'm I'm glad to to have you on i want to say have you back on but like because we tried to do this one time and we both concluded that the conversation was kind of boring and we didn't want to release it. Yeah, I don't even think we got that far. I think we were just like, it was tired. It was near the end yes. of 2020. What a great year it was. And we're like, nope, not feeling it. Yeah, I think I hit the, it was, we're at like the 20 minute mark. And I think I just pulled off the ramp. I'm like, nah, this, we're not, this yeah. isn't working today. Yep. <laughs> right. And I think that that is part of what an ADHD friendly lifestyle also is, is recognizing what, when we need to sort of take that exit ramp. Definitely that things aren't working and just muscling through is not helpful. So there are a lot of things, Myra, that I wanted to, to talk with you about on the podcast. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about hormones, but we're not going to do that today. What I want to talk to you about today is, you know, a lot around the ADHD friendly lifestyle. And it is a question that I have been kind of struggling with personally and trying to kind of figure this out. And this is something that you have spent a lot of time yourself kind of figuring out and have come up with a lot of strategies and that is how the hell do I take a vacation and one that's ADHD friendly? Yeah, for me, it was really because I don't know how to relax at home. And so going away was the only way that I could ever kind of decompress and have a break. And I also grew up in a military family, so we went to places a lot. So I had experience from a very young age of traveling and traveling as a child and then traveling as a parent. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do for sure. So one of the the challenges for, for me is first kind of figuring out when, and I think this year that I really, okay, like it's something that I guess I kind of have known and I, you know, I don't know how many listeners have a similar, you know, sort of cycle in their work, but, you know, going from 10 week coaching group cycle to mm-hmm registration and then there was a few weeks in between but there's stuff that we got to do in between and I'm just like I've been on this merry-go-round for seven years and I haven't quite figured out how to step off for a minute to breathe and Mm -hmm. I need to. Mm -hmm. I had a similar experience because I got into teaching and one of the reasons why I wanted that was to have that time off to travel and then like five six years went by at the beginning of my career and I'm like I haven't gone anywhere so what's what's that about um so I guess um, what I'm wondering is, have you spent some time dreaming and thinking about what you would like to do? Oh, I actually know. So I'm on the wait list right now uh, to go see fish in Mexico at the uh, in Cancun um, in February. Uh, I um, Mm -hmm. so I'm on the wait list. I uh, I even so last season when they were on sale, 
I asked one of my group's permission to just step out of group five minutes early because that's where I wanted to make sure I was like on the site ready to like put in my credit card. Mm -hmm. Like I had I looked at everything in advance. I was prepared. Mm -hmm. I set up my ticketing account the night before and I got my email confirmation nine minutes after they went on sale that I was on the wait list. Mm -hmm. And which was, I was just kind of heartbroken because I was like, I, even on the fence for a while, like, this is kind of expensive. Like, but, but I'm like, but I haven't taken a really, like a real vacation in so long. I mean, it's been, it's been like 10 years since I've taken a real, mm -hmm. like going somewhere nice vacation. Um, so I made the decision to, to do it. And so, uh, if a spot opens up, my credit card just gets charged. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never found a more motivating incentive to keep checking my chase app. Oh my God. I, Moira, I check it like 40 times a day and I keep like, I keep thinking that like, this is going to be the time that I'm, yeah. I'm going to see mm -hmm. the charge and I'm just going to like jump out of my seat and like scream and dance. Um, but it's, it's uh, where I'm still on the wait list. You, but you've actually described a lot of the things that I do in advance of a trip. Like you chose one thing, right? You uh -huh. want to go and, and have this experience, this fish concert, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you were like searching the internet for something to do, right? Because we get overwhelmed. Right. So you had a very narrow focus of something you were trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then you it's were- four, It's four nights of fish, by the way. Yeah. The beach. Yeah. So you might need another vacation after that to recover. And do they have, <laughs> I remember someone telling me, you know, in big music festivals, how like they got like the glamping thing or they got to stay, they went and stayed off site because as people in their forties, you know, they they didn't have the stamina that the 18 year olds had. Well, it's funny because I'm going in uh, in August to go see three nights of fish in Indiana. Okay, training. And I got my and I got my reservation for for camping. And I'm like, oh, this maybe isn't a good idea. I got to find a hotel because like I hate being hot. And if it's a hot weekend, yeah, like I'm gonna be miserable. Yeah, yeah. And so you, yeah, take, you got to take those things into account. So, and that's like really training, right? So you're going to, from that experience, you'll be able to, cause I'm going to assume that either a listener is going to feel for you so much and they're going to drop out. <laughs> so you can go in February or, you know, someone's going to get proposed to, and they're going to get married on that weekend instead. So it's going to happen. And so, yeah, so this is, you could think of the August one as like training, right. Of what to take and what not to take. Um, for sure. So I, I am in a uh, couple of uh, Facebook fish groups and mm -hmm. uh, there's been some really cool posts about like the things that you wish you had at, at shows like uh, water bottle caps, mm -hmm. you know, because like they sell you the water bottle for $10, but they don't give you the cap. And it's oh like, fuck, I can't even put this thing down now. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. So you, yeah, you definitely have all the things because what I do is I like, I make lists, like I have packing lists for myself and for my family. And I, I, I don't try to think up anything on my own because there's people who have thought it and put it on the internet. So there's a woman who has this lovely website who you put in where you're going and the time of year and she'll tell you what to pack. What? Yeah. And so, and even what kind of like, are who you going for business? Um, oh, all the fashion people will be like, I totally know who she is and I can't remember right now. So I will definitely find it and we'll, we'll, we'll put a link on the, yeah. uh, on the show yeah. notes. All right, I just wanted to jump in real quick. Uh, this is a this is an edit. We found the links after we had our conversation, uh, so we're getting that dropped in. And the links that we didn't know earlier are uh, travelfashiongirl.com, and then there's also uh, ricksteves.com, which I'm not sure if we talked about yet in this part of the conversation. But that's the link. So if I haven't mentioned it yet, we're going to talk about him. Okay, back to the conversation. Because, yeah, you can put, you know, like I'm going to Chicago in winter and I'm going for, you know, sporting events and she'll give you a, a, a okay. closed list. Um, so I took those and put them into like a Word document and then added all my own because I have creature comforts. Right. So I have that list. And then when I'm going to pack, I use that to pack. I throw it in the bag. And then when I'm leaving, because I start bringing stuff together because I'm worried about leaving something behind because I don't know people forget stuff maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I have that list as a frame of reference. And I'm kind of, I've done that with like what to do the week before, what to do the day of, mm. what to put in my bag the morning of. But doing the things like you're talking about, like the Facebook groups and the tips for people and stuff like that is totally helpful too, because it's, just, it's about saving our executive function. Right. right? So here's sort of my big, 
But one of my big questions is, so while I'm, I'm optimistic that a spot will open up, you know, we are recording this um, mm-hmm. kind of near the middle of, of July. Um, this isn't until February. What if a spot doesn't open up? Yep. Right. At what point do I start looking for something else? Mm-hmm. Like, cause that's, you know, that's also like, I, I don't know how long do I wait? And then it's like, if, if, you know, uh, cause I, I, mm-hmm. my thing on the wait list is like, I can, I would t- take a spot up to 30 days before the show, which is not a ton of time. Right. So like, do I even, should I be watching, uh, airline tickets, like, and just plan on getting something that's refundable. Um, well, and I don't know all the airlines in, you know, in the States, <laughs> like in your travel, but I do know the ones that I use a lot of them with since the pandemic are making all their tickets. Like I know, for example, Alaska airlines, all their tickets are changeable now and there might be a fee, but, um, I worked really, well, I worked really hard. No, I didn't. My husband travels a lot for work. Um, and I also work really hard to try collect points wherever I can, because if you can travel on points, those are often a lot easier to change. Okay. So you can book something in advance um, and kind of get the best. I What you did with fish is what I often do with um, airline tickets to places like Hawaii or Europe is like, I'm booking them like 350 days out to get the flights on points, knowing that you can completely cancel them. So um, that's what I would do is I would be looking for something that I could book that I might be able to change. And then I would also be looking for a backup plan of something else. And I'm a big believer in having a plan B and yeah. I don't have a plan B for this. I mean, what can replace going to see four nights of fish on the beach? What? That's a question. Yeah, no, it is. What, like, what do you like to? There's, there's a dead and company, which I think is also sold out. Um, they're going to be the same place, I think like a month later. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that in company, but I don't know if I would want to spend all that money to see, to see them. Um, like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like going to see fish in Mexico just seems like a dream. Is taking, is, is going for an event or going for, um, something completely different? Like how much of that is part of a vacation for you? So I guess for me, part of it is, yeah, so like the the knowing that there's going to be four nights of, of concert for my very favorite band, yeah. like in this beautiful, you know, uh, you know all-inclusive resort mm-hmm. is just sounds amazing because like the all-inclusive resort, you don't really need to plan much, you know, it's. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I'm, I'm totally cool with just like hanging out by the beach or the, the pool like during the day, probably recovering from each night's uh, show and. But, like, there's all these other things that I've also kind of wanted to do. Like, when I do love the idea of going somewhere warm uh, in the wintertime. Because um, being in Chicago just sucks during the wintertime. It's, it, it, it's like you're part Canadian. Yep. Oh, it's just, it gets dark so early and it's depressing. And I just need some, like, sunshine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also want to do, like, sightseeing stuff. Like, like I want to see the national parks. Mm-hmm. And, like, I love the idea of, like, renting an RV and, like, seeing the national parks. Mm-hmm. But I just want to follow somebody like, but there, you know, yeah, like, but there are people who do that. Like I was even this summer, I had to uh, take a, a new, a, not a new trailer, but with a new tow vehicle into the interior of British Columbia. And there were two routes and I just sort of tried to do general Googling and didn't find much. But then when I added in like something like RV and you get, because there's a lot of Europeans who will come here and they'll post all the kind of well, what are the speed limits and what are the various pros and cons of going this way? And so there are routes out there where somebody has like planned everything. One of the things that has helped us the most is actually going somewhere more than one time because we figure stuff out. Like we're always like looking for where's there an easy grocery store and having things close to each other. I remember reading that, I think it was an Attitude magazine, and it, it actually really struck me as something like that, like on the first glance, like, why would I want to, I want to do something different. Yeah. But then it's like, no, that actually makes a lot of sense to like, because then you actually are saving a, a bunch of executive function and it's, you, you are getting away. And yeah. I sort of see the, the, the value of whether it's a timeshare or, um, you know, just having a place that you go to. Yeah. We don't like, 
we don't like going to the same place year after year after year. It seems to be about like three times would be the, the most. Okay. But we ended up buying a timeshare because it's somewhere we can use all over North America and around the world. So we're not stuck to that one place, but it also limits where I can look. Oh, right? interesting. So with the points, I have three airlines that I can look at. And so that, again, makes it easier because I'm not navigating different systems. And with camping, because we camp too, you can have your creature comforts. You can. Do you, do you glamp or you camp? It's kind of halfway in between. We were tented <laughs> for a very long time, but like I have a big like outdoor patio because I don't like dirty feet. Right. Yeah. So we had one tent that was just for all the stuff and one tent for sleeping because I didn't want. Right. But, and we had this huge outdoor rug in between oh, so people could walk in barefoot. Right. So yeah, we have an outdoor kitchen and we're not roughing it. No. Um, <laughs> And I'm actually now post falling off the cliff. I like to go somewhere that has electricity. Um, so, yeah, but, but you get to um, like you can figure out a menu and then repeat it. But where, where do you start, though? You know, like with, with this particular thing, you know, I wanted to go. Uh, so right before COVID was the last time that they did a show in, mm -hmm. in Mexico. And I was like, oh, man, like I was actually, I was on the fence mm -hmm. to go or not. And I think a big reason why the tickets are so scarce is that they're probably just not filling up like intentionally uh, ho the hotels because of COVID. So there was a specific thing that I wanted, but now like yeah. if I don't do that and for just future vacations, like I need to make mm -hmm. vacation part of my, part of my life. Like mm -hmm. it is something that I haven't, I, you know, my, my ex didn't like taking vacations, you know, and it's like, I didn't really want to travel alone. So again, it kind of brings me back to square one. I'm like, all right, so where do I go? Yeah. So we used to go to this hotel in the interior of British Columbia where it was hot and desert. And then I discovered that we could use my husband's air miles to go to Hawaii. And it would literally cost us like 75 bucks for our family to afford to fly to Hawaii. What? So we started going every year. And um, every, and the last three years I would say, okay, this is going to be the last year. And then either on the flight or when I got there, there's something about the energy there that just fills my soul. Yeah. And I was like, no, like I need this. I need to figure out a way to make it work. And so we haven't, we were supposed to go like March, two days before they locked everything down COVID. So we didn't go. We're booked to go this in the, this December. But I sort of, for me, what I've done is made that a priority and made figuring out, like, I think the figuring out when, right? So you kind of figure out what you want to do. And then in my family, my husband, because of his work, he can't go during spring break and I still have teenagers and my team and my kids don't want to go during Christmas now. And they're so busy now in summer that they're like, I don't want to go in summer. So I've decided my, like I'm planning stuff myself now, mm. right? Like Roxy and I are doing our own virtual chat conference. We're going to California. That's awesome. And I think one of the things that I think in, that I've been discovering, I think through some of our conversations, Moira, is that like, you know what? There really just isn't a good time. Yeah. So you just have to make time to do it. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's something I've always said about like exercise. Like yeah. there's not really a good time to do it. Like I have to make the time yeah. to do it because it is... It's, it's just so important. What I want to do is take a really quick break, speaking of breaks, and uh, we will be back. And um, do you think it's possible to plan an, another vacation in 20 minutes? Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll maybe aim for that. But um, Sounds good. <laughs> we will be right back. If you like ADHD Rewired, then be sure to check out all the other shows we have here on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Here on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network, there is a little something for everyone. For tips, strategies, and really satisfying dad jokes in 20 minutes or less, check out Hacking Your ADHD with Will Curb. Parents or those working with kids, check out ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan. For a personal audio journal giving voice to her peers as an Asian Canadian with ADHD, check out the ADHD Diversified podcast with MJ Siemens, who is now the new editor and post-production manager of ADHD Rewired. 
And if you're a late diagnosed woman who is curious about how hormones affect your ADHD and you won't want to miss the ADHD friendly lifestyle with ADHD rewired coach Moira Maven. And coming this August, Will Curb of Hacking Your ADHD and ADHD Rewired Coach Roxy Martin are coming together with their brand new show called, wait, what was the question? Find all of us at ADHDrewired.com and then click on Podcast Network under the podcast tab so you can easily subscribe and share all of our shows. Oh, and I could really use some fresh reviews on Apple Podcasts. Those reviews help others find this show and they also brighten my day. And while you're there, throw some ratings and review love to the other podcasts on our network. Meet all of us every second Tuesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. Central for an hour of live Q&A on Zoom. To register, go to ADHDrewired.com slash events. Come with your questions and hang out with me, Brendan, Will, MJ, Moira, Roxy, and Barb all on Zoom. It's a lot of fun. You definitely will not regret stopping by. That's ADHDrewired.com slash events to register. Thanks so much for listening, subscribing, sharing, and reviewing all of our podcasts with others in the ADHD community. Your support means the world to us because we want to reach as many people in the ADHD community as possible because feeling alone and like nobody gets it sucks. So please help those who could benefit from hearing our podcast by sharing the word. Share our shows or maybe show them how to download it if they've never listened to a podcast before. You can find all the information about our podcast at our website at ADHDrewired.com. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from the ADHD Rewired Coaching Community. We are well into the 25th season of our intensive online coaching and accountability groups. And the 48 members who joined our summer season are already working together to get their ADHD rewired. How would it feel to work beside other people with ADHD who just get it? How would it feel to gain more clarity on what you want out of your life? to better understand your ADHD and to make forward momentum on the things that matter most to you. If you're wondering if you can live intentionally and work smarter with ADHD, your support can start with a group of people where you will be seen, understood, and accepted. The ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Groups do more than just show you the tools. It really is about connection, acceptance, and self-discovery. If you've ever felt like you have had to learn how to navigate with your ADHD alone, when you join our award-winning coaching and accountability groups, you will never have to ADHD alone again. These groups are tailor-made for people with ADHD by people with ADHD. Registration is by invitation and our first registration event is coming up soon. Make sure to get on our invitation list by going to coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. All right, we are back. So um, we didn't plan a vacation over break, uh, the, the ad break here. What, what else? Like, what are some other things that when you think about like ADHD friendly mm -hmm. um, approaches to vacation? Like, I love the idea of going to a, you know, a similar place or the same place repeatedly. So you kind of figured that space out. What about like, I know that I can't every year probably afford to take the type of, you know, trip that I'm taking that hopefully I'll be taking to Mexico. Like that's, that seems like a once every maybe five year kind of trip potentially. Um, Cause it ain't cheap. Like, it's like, I was like, who are, who are all these like rich hippies with money, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who oh is gosh. doing this? Yes. Um, yeah. Cause it, it's, uh, but like, I want vacation to be a regular part of my life. Mm -hmm. So that there does need to be, um, obviously, a, you know, budget conscientiousness. And actually I, I, uh, earlier in the year I, I opened a new savings account mm -hmm. and I have uh, a couple hundred dollars each month going into that savings account. We call that our dream account. A dream. I love that. So what are some other things like 
guided tours? Do you ever do that? Yeah, actually I have. And and the thing is with that, actually, when you go somewhere going on a walking tour is awesome because you get to hear so much. Like if you're like, I actually, I took my son to New York when he was 10 and I wanted to do a walking tour of Greenwich Village. So I found one that was a cupcake tour. And because you got to go to six different bakeries and either make or, or try cupcakes. And he actually shushed me when we were doing the walking and they were talking about. What, were, you, were you talking when you were supposed to be listening while you're <laughs> Maybe. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing we did is we. Um, so a lot of places have um, you can do bike rentals. That'd be fun. So there's the street places, right, that you can just get them. And so, again, my son and I did Central Park in 45 minutes oh, nice. because, you know, two people with ADHD on an electric bike was so much fun. So um, we kind of got into a routine. And, that, and I think that's part of it is recognizing like when I go somewhere like I'm scared of Disney World because I've just what I've heard of it is so overwhelming. But did we'll, you ever hear my story about getting lost at, at Disney World when I was like five years old? Mm hmm. So and then it took 15 additional years for, to figure out that I had ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> who, who knew, right? Like, um, but have it where we, we would plan it. So like, like it has an app that you can use to tell where is busy and where is not busy. And so I guess a lot of it comes down to like pre-planning and there's a lot of people who have figured this stuff out. Okay. And so piggyback off of them, but Let's, but to be specific, to get so find find the friends that take the cool vacations and just like pick their brain. Exactly. Like, what hotel did you go to? And have them send you the link. And they liked it. It was good. Book it. Um, because we can get. Oh, again, it's like there's so much information out there, and so by narrowing, um, your scope that way. When you mentioned uh, the the cupcake tour. That made me think of another uh, challenge. And actually, one of the things I'm actually concerned about if I do go to Mexico is I've, I've got some weird dietary stuff. Like, I have sensitivity to to things that have corn in mm -hmm. it, which is in fucking everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I recently joined this uh, um, corn allergy sensitivity Facebook group. And so, I would be what they refer to as corn light, mm -hmm. like, where I can handle a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like if I hit a certain threshold, it's just I'm I'm on the struggle bus and then I get brain fog and then it's just yeah. so like how do you plan food on vacation? So my stepdad's celiac, and again, there are people who travel who have these things and they will put stuff on, you know, make pages on the internet. One of the things that he also did too is he just had a piece of paper that would say, Does this have any weed in it? Um any and weed? wheat. Yeah, oh, wheat, wheat. Okay, for celiac. Okay. <laughs> Right. In whatever language of where he was traveling. But um, Yelp is really good at finding places like if you want if you're traveling and you want to find somewhere good to eat and you can put in food things with that. I don't know if it's corn, but they, I know what they do for gluten. And no, it's I mean, it's really I know this is, a, is more of a unique thing that not everyone uh, has but like it's so hard because it's not just like things like citric acid have corn in it right maltodextrin dextrose like those kind of like and so you want to travel somewhere that you can have a kitchen right so that you can get food and you're eating like one meal out a day and that you're not having to figure that out three times a day right because that would be exhausting and no fun which really I've figured out how to make a latte in so many different ways and places because of, you know, of wanting it to be the, the way that I want it. Um, but because when I think about like when, uh, so last time I was in Mexico I was actually on my, my honeymoon and it was a great vacation. I literally, it was, a, I think it was like a seven day honeymoon. I literally gained like 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Like it's, I mean, it was impressive how much I, I gained through it. I mean, like lobster bisque lasagna, just like crazy fattening, delicious food. Mm -hmm. And I think now I'm like, oh my God, that would just be like, I'd be in a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, even one of the things I was looking forward to, I was like, um, do I have to bring my own food? So we've tended to try to find like places that include breakfast. Okay. And sometimes if they have like, you know, they have fruit and they have yogurt and they have, and you can do that. And then this one place we love to stay in Hawaii and it only has 44 units. So I'm not telling people where it is, but they do like a, a you can go and they'll have all the stuff out and they, in the rooms, they have like big bowls. And so people will like 
put all the fruit in and, and then you can go back and, you know, eat it uh, on your veranda or what? No, there's another word for it. In Hawaii, your, um, it's the word starts with lanai. I'm like, see, I need to go to Hawaii. I'm forgetting the words. Um, and then, you know, uh, a lot of people go to Hawaii. The first thing they do is hit Costco. And my husband, the first time we were going, they're like, why is everybody talking about landing and going to Costco? And it's because one, you know, the giant alcohol, but two, you can get like things that you can put in a fridge where you're staying and you've got barbecue, you've got potato salad, you've got a veggie plate. And so you're not um, figuring out all this stuff. And then when you leave, you just pass the things that you didn't use onto somebody else who's staying in the place. So how, how far in advance do you typically plan most of your trips? I just booked March. Of 2022. Yep. Okay. And um, our timeshare is nine months and flights are usually 12. So somewhere between there. How do timeshares actually work? They're all different. And there's different, like we bought ours, which is called, like, I think we bought it. I can't remember if it's called retail or wholesale. Like we bought it from the company that was selling it. There's a lot of times that you can buy them. If we were going to add to it, I would buy something on the resale market because it's a lot cheaper. There's, it's called Timeshare User Group. They have amazing um, people who use timeshares and they talk about that whole process of, of buying them because ours is literally a point system. And so we can use them, like we can use them up to a year in advance. So we're able to, and if we don't use them, it's a, it's a timeshare that also has a hotel system. So we can transfer it over to the hotel chain. So we had to do that with a little bit of stuff with COVID. And so my husband are actually going up to Whistler for our anniversary weekend. And we're using those points to pay for the hotel. Do you ever use a travel agent? No, no. But that's because I really like doing all of this stuff. I would use a travel agent if I could learn from them. Okay. That's an interesting perspective. Because it doesn't cost anything to use a travel agent, right? I don't think so, no. Because they get paid by the resorts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it'd be awesome if we can get all the listeners to to come to the show notes for this episode and just like share all of their tips for, for vacations. Oh, they, yeah, they would definitely know a lot more than the two of us together, right? <laughs> the combined listenership. Right, I'm just thinking about like, and even just like things like on this kind of vacation, you should definitely plan, you know, this many days for like sort of like recovery. Like, yes. I, mean, I know even even just like learning from uh, going to Chad conferences, like I, I having a recovery day when I returned, it was like, yeah, it had become like it's that's an immovable thing, like recovery day, no matter what. Like, I don't care what's on the schedule, what's going on. Like, I, I need a full recovery day. Otherwise, it's like. It's a painful ride on the struggle bus. Yep. And I, I won't come back from Hawaii on an overnight plane because to me, why would I go on a vacation where I'm going to relax and rejuvenate and then not sleep all night on a plane? Mm. But I will do that to go to Europe because I think that's the only way to go there. Mm. And you get there in the morning, but it's at the beginning. So it's it's it feels different. That, that sounds like an advanced level travel. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, all, I know how I function without <laughs> sleep. So um, yeah. Me too. One other uh, just a little tidbit is if you Costco has a whole travel department oh. and if you rent your car through them, you get a second driver free and it's not them like they're just a clearinghouse for all the other rental agencies. What you get a second what? You free? get a second driver like most car rentals are $14 per day to have two drivers. OK, like you get one driver on the thing. So if you do it through Costco. You can have two drivers and it doesn't cost you anymore. I think that if there is somebody listening who loves travel and has the organizational skills to create an ADHD travel agency, um, please reach out to me once you've started your business. I'll, I'll, be, I'll happily be your first your first customer. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I think the, the two things to start with are when and and what, right? What you want to do. Um, I'm not going to lie. It still feels so overwhelming. Yeah. Well, then maybe make a list of the, I'm running out of time to do things with my kids because my daughter only has two more summers before being done high school. Mm -hmm. And I want to take my son on on some vacations. Mm -hmm. Although we went to uh, Minnesota for just an extended weekend and we, we drove there and it was, it, it was his longest car trip we've ever taken. It was seven hours with stops. Mm -hmm. And um, 
let me tell you the uh, the last few hours there, Moira. Um, oh, mm-hmm. the, I I think I should get a, an award for not a hundred percent completely losing my shit. <laughs> I don't doubt. I don't doubt it. <laughs> oh my god! But uh, yeah, so something that's easy for kids to, for for travel, at least for yeah. my kid. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Like that's that plays into it too, right? Time zones, cultures, food. Yeah. Length of time traveling. All of those things. I know that like, the other countries have a lot of the all inclusive resorts. Do they have those in other places besides like Mexico? I, do you do you know if we have those in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, like I know. Um, I don't know so much in the U.S. I know like places like you know the Dominican and Puerto Rico, and they have those. Um, yeah, in the U.S., it tends to be more breakfast. Okay, you can get you can get breakfast at a lot of places. I guess the other thing is like, yeah, if you get like a hotel chain that you like, and then you can connect, collect points there too. So what, what, tell me some of the best vacations you've ever been on. Um, one of my favorite moments was, uh, walking in, um, was in the Cotswolds in England. A friend of mine lived there and she lent me her car and I went off by myself and stayed in little villages and would get up at the crack of dawn and go walking through towns and, and that sounds so cool. Like how, how would you even start doing something like so that? So there's a gentleman by the name of Rick Steves, and he has built a career out of going to Europe every summer for about 30 years. And his whole thing is about being off the beaten track. So he tells you how to avoid crowds. He tells you how to skip lines. Um, there's some of the things because he's so popular that it's like, oh, everybody, you know, these are all Rick Steves people here, but um, he also gives you places to stay. Like when my husband, we got engaged in Paris and uh, I had gone for the summer um, to France and he came and met me. And the first night there, there was my friend and him and it was in the middle of this big heat wave. So we go to this little hole in the wall restaurant run by this French woman and her little dog. And my husband's like, I'm in France for the first time. I'm going to order French onion soup. And the woman was like, no, it's too hot if because you have to bake it. Right. So she's like, if you want that, you can go to another restaurant. But I'm not making that tonight because it's too hot. And so we stayed. But it was such a memorable experience. And so having those Rick Steve books, you can get them out of the library. He read like with all the other travel books. But again, he narrows his focus. He doesn't go everywhere and do everything. He's like, this is what. If you want unique experiences in these places, this is where to go. So it sounds like a theme of, of really like identify parameters to narrow the focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any things to just like stay away from, be aware of um, any lessons that you've learned that. Uh... I think not always being on the move, right? Like having, if, even if, if you're traveling and you're going to different places, have some rest days built in or like mini vacations within that so that you can, um, so that you can, because that it just, we need a break from that. Like you said, having that downtime after. Yeah. Um, and thinking about what are the things that make you feel really good in your life? Like, for example, your love of pickleball is where are the places like kind of putting those things together? Where are the places where you could go and have a great pickleball experience? I love that idea. Yeah. So I actually heard that there is a pickleball cruise, mm. but but this cruise ship has like thousands of people and like one court. Yeah. And that sounds dumb. And and cruising is something that I'm kind of interested in, but there's such there's so much there, right? And so it would be finding the right line that's going to the right place. I've never been on a cruise. I've always wanted to because it's all right there. Mm-hmm. However, I have definitely been concerned that I would get like seasick. Right. I think they're so big that it doesn't happen. I don't know. There's, yeah. Yeah. Like the, the newer ones. Like they're, they're like buildings. They're massive. Hmm. I'd like to go on a canal walking tour somewhere in Europe or the UK where you have bikes that are available. You have a chef. Oh, that'd be fun. You're sleeping on the boat and it's just going along the the canals and you can get off and right ahead to the next village. You know or- what I think it, like as, as you're talking more, I think that there's just like things that I didn't even know were like possible mm. that like, so almost like where would be a good place to look for 
what kinds of vacations are possible? I always just start with Googling. Just Google. Like, what, what would yeah. you, what would you Google? Like, but I would Google. I wouldn't know what to like look for. For me, I would Google slow travel, slow right? Travel. Because that's what I've learned is I don't want to do Europe in 12 days, right? Um, the first time I went there, I ended up staying in the UK for nine months. Wow. Um, and then I spent six weeks in France Huh. because I like to like experience, oh my God, sleeping in a chateau, French breakfast. So good. Huh. And now actually the more I get to know the United States, the more I want to explore the United States because it's also different. Yeah. And Canada is pretty cool too. I, I once saw Canada when I was Fly over in it? Michigan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you wave? Where, it, was, it was at one of the, 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 I think it was the ADA conference. Mm-hmm. And oh my God, I'm like, it's so funny. I saw, so I saw the sign that said to Canada and I was like, wait, is the country? I didn't realize how close we actually were. Mm-hmm. Like it was literally on the other side of like this river. Mm-hmm. That was like, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I had no idea. I'm yeah. really only like a six hour drive uh, to Canada. So now um, the, the, the big question is how am I actually going to not spend the rest of my day Googling vacations? Because I still have more work to do. <laughs> well, see, I have things. I know I have vacation stuff I want to do too. And I just, that's when I sort of like, okay, I give myself like, time to just maybe while people are watching things on TV that I'm not really interested in and I'll just sit with my iPad or my laptop and just sort of explore. Okay. So more, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but um, would you host it like a two or three hour Ash plus session? Like help me, like where you can, you kind of start us off on what to look for. Then we like spend time planning a vacation. Sure. <sighs> that would be amazing. <laughs> the sharp intake of breath. <sighs> What I'm really excited about, well, is that the trip that we didn't do to the UK because of COVID, I've already figured it all out, right? So my hope is that, and I have to figure this out with you because of, you know, us coaching is I need two weeks, either this summer or or not this summer, like 2022 or 2023 to go to the UK and do this trip that I've already planned, right? Because that, yeah, because that's the the figuring out. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I I could plan another trip though. Use that as a that's amazing because there's always somewhere I want to go. Moira maybe thank you so much for uh for sort of piquing my interest. I think I uh, answered a lot of questions. You also gave me more questions that I'm gonna uh I think hit the Google with. And um will you just cross your fingers for me that I get to go to this uh let's go see fish in Mexico? Let's, let's just, let, me, let me just check before I let you go. Let me just check my let me check my chase. Definitely. Oh my god, that's that, how exciting would that be? Yeah, oh yeah, check and see. Maybe you got it now. Okay, no way. I'm still on the wait list. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> Maria, thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I'll have you back on again because you are like a wealth of knowledge around like women and hormones. And I am constantly hearing uh, uh, members of uh, the, the people who are in your coaching groups saying, oh my God, there's so many things about hormones and, and how like medication affects hormones and all these different things that they had no idea um, so I, I want to have you on uh, to share that information here. So we will uh, we will do this again sometime soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Moira. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall virtual co-working membership community. Find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons can join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tivers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn. 
at linkedin.com slash Eric Tivers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person, and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keep Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15 minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.